sense of what's happening on the ground. Let's go to Tokyo radio host Kamasami Kong. He was in Tokyo when the quake hit, and he's Skyping with us from Osaka, which is, I guess, northwest of where the epicenter was. Thanks so much for being with us. This is a very clear shot. Good to see you. Tell me, what did you feel when all of this happened? Oh, I can tell you. I could, I, it started off as a little bit of a shake, and I was just getting ready to take a shower. I had the water running, and I was just about ready to step in. It started shaking more and more and until it became violent, and I realized it's time now to put on my pants and get out the door because it was, it was scary. Actually, it was more than scary. It was completely terrifying. Did you know the big one had hit? Um, I knew something had hit. I... I knew I had never felt like that before. I was here in Osaka when the uh, Kobe earthquake happened, the great Hanshin earthquake happened back in 1995. I experienced that. I knew what the shaking was all about, but I had never experienced anything quite like the shaking that happened during this earthquake just the other day. So you were in Tokyo, which I want to paint a picture yeah. for people. You felt all that, and there was damage, and there are people who are without electricity tonight, but that's quite a ways away from the epicenter. Have you been able to have any contact with people who were actually closer to where the most devastation is? Yeah, I talked with a gentleman by the name of uh, Sato Chikuzen. He is a singer in a group called Sing Like Talking. He was there, he experienced it, and he said that it was absolutely, well, Forgive the, not a pun, but he said it was earth shattering. And, you know, I, I'm curious to know, we keep hearing about people without food, without drinking water. Uh, what is life like in Sendai, that epicenter? Well, I, I, I don't know anything more about Sendai than what I'm seeing on your, your TV reports. But uh, I can tell you that in Tokyo, there is a panic happening at the supermarkets right now. Everybody is scrambling to try to get food. And of course, you've been seeing pictures of all the empty shelves. And I've been receiving reports from friends who are in Tokyo who send SMS messages and they contact me on Facebook. And they keep saying that, uh, you know, it's kind of a panic. It is a panic situation there. Well, well tell me this, because I mean, there's so much more infrastructure and so much more support in a city like Tokyo than there would be in some of these outer liner air, outlying areas. What are you guys hearing about the nuclear threat that's going on? Well, as a matter of fact, I've been talking to my colleagues here at a radio station called FM Kokolo, and for the most part, here in Osaka, no one is really too much concerned with that. Everybody, everybody has strong feelings of sympathy for all the people who are enduring what's happening up there in Sendai, but for the most part, the feeling here in Osaka, in the Kansai region, which, which is south, southwest of Tokyo, is pretty much calm. Everybody's pretty much calm here. All right. Well, uh, we hope that Kamasami Kong can stay safe, all of you guys safe there in Osaka, as well as where you started in Tokyo and across the country. Thank you. I should mention one more thing. Uh, we, we, unfortunately, we're going to lose you off Skype, and I don't want that to happen in the middle of your sentence. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Kong. All right. Well, an update now on the break.